Hallelujah. It was that day, hallelujah, that the Spirit, hallelujah, breathed on each of them, hallelujah, hallelujah, and they were filled, hallelujah. Anybody glad that you're filled with the Holy Ghost on this morning? Hallelujah. Are you glad that you're filled with the Holy Ghost on this morning? That God breathed on you, hallelujah. 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 Look at somebody and say that Simon continues. Oh, look at somebody and say that the assignment continues. Assignment. Hallelujah. Meaning just because that you got saved doesn't mean it stops there. Hallelujah. It goes on from generation to generation and to generation. Anybody believe that on this morning? Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is falling. Hallelujah. On every creature. Hallelujah. 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 Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. As we give thanks on this morning. Hallelujah. dwells on the inside of you then let's express to God how we appreciate him this morning uh, 
You don't just applaud him, but you open up your mouth and you tell him thank you. Uh, they was in one place on one accord. Come on, let's set the atmosphere. The prayer this morning is not about you, but it's about celebrating the birth of the church. And we ought to appreciate what God has given us. Don't you thank him for the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit has kept you and I. And for that, we give him the praise. Lord Jesus Christ, we love you this morning. We magnify you. We give your name the glory and the honor because you're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the glory. God, so many people think they understand how things operate. But we thank you for allowing us to be filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God give the utterance. We thank you for choosing us. God, we thank you for saving us. We appreciate your grace and we appreciate your mercy. And now that we have come here to celebrate Pentecost, we're not determined about what we have on or we don't care how nice the white may be, but we come here to lift you up on this morning. We come to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We come to get on one accord so we can experience the move of God like never before so with that we bind the hand of the enemy now we plead the very blood of Jesus against every demonic force that has sent an assignment here to see not the spirit of God operate but the spirit of God will operate we speak salvation right now in the name of Jesus to the sinner that is sitting in the pew I Speak something that needs to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank God now in advance for the souls that will be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Oh God, we thank you now. We give you the glory for the healing power. Oh God, yes, Lord. Don't just let us come here for form of fashion just to sing a nice lineup. Oh God, but we came to be refilled again. Oh God, from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Oh God, refill us once again. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, have your way this morning. And we'll praise you. We'll magnify you. So with this, we'll go ahead and set the atmosphere. Somebody begin to praise him. Somebody allow the Holy Ghost to move on today. Somebody give him the highest praise. Oh yeah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Lord, to your will and to your way. Lord, to your will and to your way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, Ty, and clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Let it sound like thunder in here. Clap your hands, Ty. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord. Exalt his name. He's worthy of the praise. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We give you the glory. And we seal the prayer by saying, in the name of Jesus. It's done. I'm sorry if I didn't say bless your house. And you receive a promotion and bless this and bless that. But I came here for one assignment this morning. And my assignment is to present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. I come to magnify God because as Acts chapter 2 verse 1 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all on one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them clothing tongues black as fire and it is set upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy ghost and begin to speak in tongues as the spirit gave them utterance it's just not an individual thing but it's a corporate thing and we all need to be filled again and jesus
know Jesus is his name. Hallelujah. Yes, today, today, forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 Let's produce a spirit of worship in the atmosphere on today. Just lift your hands all over this house. Hallelujah. 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 And let the Lord receive your worship on this morning. Thank you, this is my worship. Don't open up your mouth and whisper something sweet to us. Oh, 
worship you for me. He is my worship. He is my worship. All of my worship. We sing my worship. All of my worship. You are. You are. You are worthy. Worship you for me for all for all the things you got for me. And no one can worship you for me. Give my worship.
time to lift our hands and to tell you thank you. We take this moment in time to tell you, Lord, we appreciate you pouring out your Holy Ghost for the gift of speaking in tongues, for the ability to witness to the world about how wonderful you are. Now, God, we ask you to send your word as a fire. Send it now, oh God, someone needs to be delivered. Someone needs to be redeemed. Someone needs to be saved once again. We ask you this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we also ever give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God give him a good praise. That would be all right if it was for me. Before you're seated, just look to the left and look to the right and say, I'm glad you're in the house tonight. But give me a little bit of room. That's about to burst out. We magnify the name of the Lord. We thank him for his goodness and his mercy. We thank God for how he's been good to us. He's been excellent. Man. Amen. I don't know, but this is day 10 of our holy consecration. And I've been getting some testimonies about what the Lord has done. Look at somebody and say, you haven't seen anything yet. I, I, I feel like just taking off and running down the aisle. in the building. 
I feel a breakthrough in the building. I feel the Spirit of worship and praise is in the house. Turn with me to two passages of scripture this morning. The first being found in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 1 through 4. And we will culminate in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. Let us stand in worship of the reading of God's word. Reason this wise. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a, 
sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Let, let me stop, let me read it over. And suddenly there was a great sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the, all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongue as has a fire and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. And we, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you all, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Just like to finish it by reading it from the uh, amplified version in the name of the Lord. And it reads on this wise, but you shall receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to tell people about me both in Jerusalem and in all of Samaria and uh, uh, Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word and sanctify it deep within your heart for this morning I'd like you to just look at somebody and say the wind is coming. In the sequel to the Gospel of Luke, we are talking about it when you begin to read it. The Acts of the Apostles tells the story of what happens to Jesus after he leaves the earth. The book of Acts begins to share that with us, or I should say, he steps on a cloud and goes back home. And he calls, and I use the terminology because I've been using them all week this week, Ubers. He calls his Holy Ghost Uber puts his feet on the cloud, and he rides up to heaven. The movement is started because it begins or continues to grow, and it even begins to move forward. When I'm talking about the movement, I'm talking about all of the things that he had begun to teach his 12 disciples. And it started to grow because now in the upper room, which we'll talk about in a few, there's about 120 individuals. Amen, that obey the word of God. The problem is now is that we don't want to obey the word of God. We would prefer to obey man instead of God. The writer who most uh, Bible experts or God agreed to tell us that begins to write this book in Acts is Luke. Amen. He starts Acts by closing the book on the story of Jesus tells us about where he was born. He tells us all of the great miracles that had transpired in his life. He begins to tell us all of those wonderful things. And in the process of him doing that, he begins to give us the roadmap to where we need to be. He tells us how he chooses 12 ordinary men. He takes these ordinary men and says to them, we're going to conquer the world. He gives them a special anointing and blesses them as they go in and come out. Here it is, disciples are gathered together on the Mount of Olives in which they watch Jesus ascend into the sky. Disciples are there as they watch him soar through the, out of their sight and begin to face the uncertainty of Jesus as preparing them for his departure. It's difficult for them to look at it because they're beginning to think, wow, he's getting ready to leave. But you have to remember that Jesus literally and actually prepares them for his leaving. He begins to tell them, let not your heart be troubled. 
If you believe in God, believe also in me, for in my house are many mansions there. You have to understand that they did not believe that he was going. When he sits them down, before he gives them the final supper, he begins to prepare them for his leaving. Amen. That's one of the most dismal moments in their lives. Could you imagine walking with Jesus every day for three and a half years? Amen. Could you imagine getting up? Amen. Having coffee, if that's what they drank at that time. Amen. Having tea and listening to words of wisdom and power fall from, radiate from his body, out of his pores, and fall from his lips and his tongue. Could you imagine that everything that they needed, he provided? Amen. When they came together, it was time for them to pay their taxes. Jesus tells them to go down by the way and the first fish you catch, open his mouth and you will find. Now, how who told the fish that's eight gold and silver, whatever it was, in order to be a blessing. But God provided for him. Amen. They had saw him heal sick and raise the dead. You know what I'm talking about? For, tw for three and a half years, they had walked with him and everything that they needed, he provided. When they went to, when they found themselves in a position where they were out in the wilderness and they were being taught by him and the words were being offered out of his mouth. Amen. And then he realized that they were hungry. He said, who has food? He blessed it. And after he blessed it, amen, he sent it all out. And there were at least 12 other baskets left. Each of the apostles got a basket from God. He was able to provide for them. Can you imagine seeing him? Amen. When he saw people lying on the streets, and looking at a man that had been there for a while, told him to rise up and walk, and he got up. Amen. How he had healed individuals time and time again. No other passages, no other stories in the Old Testament talks about a blind man that saw. Amen. Jesus did this and they witnessed all of this. Amen. They were, they were excited about what they were seeing. And now this man that they loved and had sold and sold out everything was telling him, I am getting out of here. They had saw him even for that. They had saw him later on after he had given them those words. They saw him hanging on a tree. Oh, God, see the blood dripping from his head. Saw the blood pouring out of his side, out of his feet. Amen. They had scattered because they thought that that man was dead for real. But they did not know that they said to him, if I be lifted up from the earth. Oh, God, that I would draw all men. Somebody ought to say thank you. Because his dying did not only affect them, but it affected us. Maybe I'm in the wrong church. I'm in the wrong church. You, you, you don't realize how good God has been. Because if it had not but for him, you would still be in your drunken stupor. Still be smoking that chronic. Still be in that position. Look at what God has done for you. Took the taste of cigarettes out your mouth. Took the taste of liquor out your mouth. Took the wine, the things that were not godly out of your mind and replaced them with a praise. the only one that knows about it. It is. Amen. He understands that they were preparing for his departure. And as they were preparing for his departure, amen, they found themselves in a position and he does something. And can, I, can I just talk for a few minutes? Amen. Here it is. He finds himself when he comes in Amen. After he has hung on the tree, after he has died, amen, after he gave up the ghost. I wanted to be very careful that you understand that nobody took his life. I want you to know that. He laid it down for you. Oh, God, do you understand? He laid it down. He came through 40 and two generations just to let you know I love you. God loves you. He is. He found himself after going through all of that. 
amen, running to the tomb that next morning, Mary, amen, running there to see him, to do the final preparations for his death, to wrap his body, amen, so that he would do ceremonially what the Jews would do when a regular person would die. But when she got there, amen, there was nobody but some folded clothes. Amen. And, and, and can, I, can I say something right here? Amen. He had the folding clothes, the death clothes, the grave clothes that he owned. Some kind of way he changed clothes because he knew he wasn't going to stay in the grave. Y'all going to get that. Y'all going to get that. Where did he get the clothes from? He's God. He provides everything he needs. You say, I'm crazy. Yes, I am. That's God. <laughs> then I'm going to insert this. You have not because you. Matter of fact, before I go any further, just look at somebody and say, God provides. <laughs> I, this side is, is uh, Kim he provides yeah. have you ever been down to your last yeah. and God provided He provides. He provides on a daily basis. Who he is. He does this miracle things. They see all of the stuff that he's done. Amen. Uh, amen. I don't have to go to I don't have to go to uh, uh, Rock Hill this afternoon because Rock Hill is in the house. Well, Rock Hill is not uh, accustomed to me pre finishing preaching before four o'clock. <laughs> Y'all caught that. <laughs> here it is. Can, can I, want you, I want you to understand that here are these men, these women. They see him. They see him. They go to the grave. They find him getting up. And then they don't know where he is. They don't even know what his transferred body looks like, what he looks like now, what shapes and faces that he, they didn't know him, Alexander, until he spoke out of his mouth. Then they heard who he was. Oh, master. You know what I'm saying? Now, here he is. They're going through all of this stuff. Amen. But he does some things. He begins to do some godlike stuff. Amen. He does, during the 40 days, he does some godlike stuff. Amen. They're in their secret chamber in the bottom of a building somewhere where the doors have been locked. Amen. There's no one. There's a centurion standing out of somebody trying witness. And there's a secret code that they have to get in to get into the building. But while they're in there doing church stuff, Jesus walks through the wall. They look around to see is there another door? He walks through the door and then he does something so spectacular. He says, Touch me. He's not a ghost. Amen. Not a ghost. He even sits down and eats with them. His digestive system is still working, but he's God. You see all of this. I, I, I'm going to get the Pentecost. I'm going to get to it. <laughs> he does all of this wonderful stuff. Amen. He provides for them. Then old Doubt and Thomas comes in. They heard about it. When they got out, they said, we saw Jesus. You know how you are when you see, tell somebody about what the Lord has done for you. 
and they don't even want to believe it. Get on out of here. But the God I serve opens doors that no man can shut. This week, I heard a testimony about a young lady that said she couldn't leave her job, amen, because she had so much uh, school debt that she had to figure out a way to stay on it, even though she had the time in to retire. She could not leave it because she knew that she could not survive on what her, uh, her retirement money was alone and pay her school debt. But she had laid a petition before God. She got on the computer just to figure out how much she owed. And when she got there and looked at it, there was a zero on the screen. Somebody ought to catch a hold of that. Somebody ought to scream, I need a zero blessing, Lord. Not only that, this is important that you understand. Not only that, but then I got a testimony. Somebody did not want to be out there. They wanted to tell me exactly what was going on. They said, Bishop, when I call in, I got folks, I got a business. I'm running it. It's working right. It's working right. It's doing all the wonderful things. Amen. But I am getting calls from folk where I've got abundance of blessing. I need you to understand this, that you do not have to live in abstract poverty. You do not have to be poor, amen, and saying I can't do, no, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm telling you that it's not, I'm not trying to teach all that prosperity. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this, that God will supply all of your needs. I, I need somebody that believes that. Stand up on your feet. He's done it for me. Look at somebody say, he's done it for me before. He can do it for you right now. And then he can do it again for me. I've been hearing testimonies of healing power. Man, my cousin, amen, she has cancer. Amen, her stomach had bloated. Amen, she had gone through the old things. The only thing she knew to do was call Cousin Bishop. Amen. Called me, and the only thing I could do was pray. Amen, but I kept a word. I gave her every morning. I sent her a text with a scripture. Amen, and I prayed for her. Amen. She told me that her stomach went down. She said, God ain't finished yet, but I believe him. I need you right now to lay your hand on yourself. I speak to whatever illness is in your body. Loose him! Loose him! In the name of Jesus. And I'm going to ask every saint in here to lay your hand on your head and say, Lord, keep my mind stayed on you. I bind up that spirit that is trying to affect your mind. And I say right now, Lord, loose me. I'm tired of folks saying the saints are crazy. They just need a deliverance. They just need the Lord to bless them. Here it is. We have to understand that God is in that position. He tells them, and it goes back to the point that we have to go to John chapter 14. 
and we get in verses 1 through 4, and I just begin to talk about it, and I just need to share it with you a little bit more. It says, let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe, ye believe in God, believe also in me. I am my father's, I'm in my father's house on many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, that if I go and prepare a place for you, amen, that says, therefore, a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go and know you know the way, and you know the way. Here it is, the way you know it. It begins to share it with you. And I want you to understand this. Can I... it, it's amazing to me. It, it's really amazing that we are so caught up in the music part. No, Because I got a fantastic music department. Amen. That unless you hear the drums and the piano and the keyboard, amen, you, you, you don't move. I, I don't understand that. I, I've been in places where I did not have a musician. I've been in places where I could not put on the 50,000 songs that I have in my iPad. I, I was by myself, and while I was praying, when I was crying out over the Lord, music came above my head. Have you ever shouted in your house? This is the only folk that shouted in your house. I've danced in my living room. I've danced in my kitchen. I've danced out my bathroom because the Lord has been good. He deserves a praise wherever I am. I pulled my car over on the side of the road and spoke in tongues. Here it is. Mm. they found themselves in a position where they had never been in before. They found themselves going and listening to what God had told them to do. Amen. When he found them going and they, they did a circle, if you please, they've kind of walked around and went to Bethany. Amen. They went by Bethany. Bethany is the place where you know him, Mary and Martha were there where Lazarus was raised from the dead. Amen. Here they are. There were so many individuals that felt that the only power and authority he had was to raise other people. Amen. They did not believe that he could raise himself up from the grave. Here it is. It came down through Bethany and went around the mountain curves and found themselves in a position uh, near the Mount of Olives. Amen. He catches up and finds himself getting ready to ascend to glory. And as he's ascending to glory, amen, he begins to tell them, go and wait. Amen, that's a horrible word to some of us. Amen, we don't want to hear the word wait. Amen, we want it to happen right now. If it doesn't happen right now, amen, we got a problem. Amen, he tells them to go and wait until you receive power. Amen. There is something about him that as he's going up, he tells them to go back to Jerusalem and there to wait until they are endowed with a power from on high. There's a story on one occasion, if I could take my time, a David inquired of the Lord, shall I go up against the Philistines? Amen. To which the Lord replied, go up. And David defeated the Philistines in 2 Samuel, somewhere around chapter 5 and verse 19. Amen. They threatened again by the same enemy. And David asked the Lord the same question. He said, this time the Lord shall go not, not up. Sometimes God will tell you when it's time for you to move. And then God will tell you not to move. Most of the time, they want an answer right away. So they will tell you that if you're praying and you've been on your knees for the last five or ten minutes, that when you get up, that you're going to have an answer for me. But sometimes it doesn't work like that. 
Sometimes you've got to turn your plate over. Amen. Some of the demons that you are facing and wrestling with. Amen. Takes more than a clapping of the hand. Amen. Sometimes you've got to go through it with prayer and fasting. For the last 10 days, we've been turning down our plate. We've been soliciting the Lord to move in our lives as never before. We've been crying out and saying, God, I need help. Amen. Here it is that when he tells them to go, not to go up, but wait until he hears the marching and the tops of the mulberry tree. And for the Lord will go out before you. Amen. We want you to know that this illustrates uh, to us the ways of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We think that the Holy Spirit only operates in one kind of way. Amen. But I'm here to tell you the Holy Ghost moves the way it wants to move. Amen. Here they are. They find themselves listening to God and victory comes. Amen. At Jerusalem. And I tell you this in Acts chapter number two, somewhere around verse number one through four. Amen. We talk about three phenomenons of wind that begin to happen. Amen. It looks like fire. Amen. One of them, amen, are something that happens to show us that God is in the place. Amen. We see the three phenomena. Amen. One was wind like fire noise. Amen. The wind begins to blow and there's noise everywhere. Could I push pause right here? Amen. Because when the, you read the book of, amen, the 37th, 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, you find him walking into a desert. And while he's there, there's nothing but dry bones. Amen. Limbs and pieces. Amen. Of dead scorched. Amen. Amen. Vessels that seem to be in the building. Amen. Here they are laying there. And when the prophet Ezekiel comes, God speaks to him and says prophesy to these bones. Amen. And when he begins to prophesy, amen, the Bible says that the wind begins to blow. I've come to give you a word that the wind is starting to blow. Amen. We made it to God. We made it through COVID. Amen. We made it through three and a half years. Amen. Of all the struggles. We made it through three and a half years of difficult times, of sickness all around us. But look at us now. We made it with a praise on our lips. And we got a praise in our hearts. Somebody ought to scream up in here. The God I serve is a good God. Amen. For three and a half years. Amen. We were frowning and teetering on the deathbed of life. But the God we serve is a wonderful God. He's a God that opens doors that no man can shut. And he kept us. Amen. Even though we were affected. Amen. He still kept us. And we got a lot to give him praise about. I've come to give you a word today. Amen. Here it is. And can I can I just talk about it for a few minutes? I've been traveling. I went to New York last week and I spent some time with my dad. Amen. I'm going to tell you, he tells me to tell everybody here, praise the Lord. And the reason why I'm saying it, I mean, I'd gotten accustomed to South Carolina. And when I went to New York, I couldn't get ready with it. It seemed that they were still in pollen season. And here I am. I want you to know that I've come this far by faith and I've been leaning on the Lord I've been trusting in his name I've come to share with you just how wonderful he is. Amen. Here it is. We understand that when you look at it, amen, the phenomenon of the wind blowing, amen, the phenomenon of the tongues that came like fire, amen, the things that we begin to understand as never before. We see God at work in this thing. Amen. Here it is that we have to know that God is also doing something miraculous. He takes 120 individuals 
individuals, uh, amen, and fills them with the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, with other tongues. I want you to know something, uh, that the reason why they were speaking in other tongues uh, is that they had a mission, uh, and the mission was to draw men unto God. Uh, each tongue was for a specific group of people uh, that needed to hear a word. Uh, look at somebody and put your hands together and say, I need a word. Here it is. They needed a word. And I need you to understand it. Can I talk about it for a while? They were in this room. Amen. Ten days. Amen. We can't get you to stay in prayer for an hour and a half. But they were in there for ten days. For ten days. Amen. They were doing all kind of business and all kind of stuff for ten days. And in the process of doing it for these ten days... God began to move. And on the 10th day, they were all in one place. That may have been the problem. That even though they were waiting for God to do something, they weren't on one accord yet. Do you know how hard it is to get people on one accord? I got five gentlemen sitting on the front row and their focus is on five to ten different things. How do I get them to believe God is in the building? What do we do to get them on one accord? To say, God, you promised that if I hold my peace, you fight my battle. You promised that if I stand up firm, that I can preach like I've never preached before. Now, you think I'm picking on the men, but Lord, have mercy. How do I get five women to stand together? I'm trying to think it out. I tell them about how wonderful their hats look. If I say the one, I got to say the all. And the fourth one's hat don't look that good. I got to behave. I've been getting some great preaching the last week. Can I just be fatherly today? Do you mind if I don't hoop and holler? Can I just be fatherly today? How do we get a church on one accord? How do we get a place that we see God in moving? Mac, I'm glad you're in the house, sir. Amen. That's my new friend, Mac. Stand up and wave your hand, Mac. <laughs> can, I, can I take my time? Don't worry. I'm going to say some stuff that's not going out on the air. How do we get on one accord that we can see the Holy Ghost? moving. Now, what you talking about, Bishop? There are moments in the congregation that while we are worshiping 